Where did they go? Why did they build this crap? Every gamer knows the moment they became a gamer. The moment they went from being a carefree child, casually enjoying the experience of gaming after school or on the weekend, to a raging gaming lunatic hell-bent on beating and mastering games they already had and impatiently waiting on the next anticipated release. Of course, there's nuance, you don't have to be a raging gaming lunatic to call yourself a gamer, but hyperbole makes the world go round and never let the truth get in the way of a great intro. As the highest selling console of all time, the PlayStation 2 defined a generation of gamers. It was the system that took console gaming to the next level and showed players the depths that are possible for storytelling and gameplay from your own couch. Ratchet and Clank, Grand Theft Auto, Kingdom Hearts, these are series that are still alive today that grew to their strongest on the PS2 system alone. But there is one series that stands above the rest when comparing popularity, critical review, and total abandonment, and that is Jack and Daxter. While similar series like Ratchet & Clank, Crash Bandicoot and Spyro continue to get new installments and remakes, Jack & Daxter hasn't seen a new main series entry since 2004 or a side game since 2009. The trilogy has been bundled, remastered and re-released twice in the last 10 years, yet we've seen no evidence of a new entry or a remake. Jack and Daxter and Jack have seemingly been abandoned, despite the community and fans of the series being just as active in 2023. Today, we're going to take a look at the series overall and then try and understand why the series has gone into hibernation and of course, answer the raging question, is there hope for a relaunch? Welcome to Mojo Plays, I'm Matt and today we're looking at what happened to Jack and Daxter. Before we continue, we publish content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of our latest videos. Even though you can't be a gamer today without having at least heard the name Naughty Dog, back in the late 90s, Naughty Dog was relatively unknown. Not because they hadn't established themselves as one of the best developers in the industry, they well and truly had, but because gaming was still, by today's standard, in its infancy, or at least its teens. Even for hardcore gamers, it wasn't expected or demanded by fans to know the names of developers and publishers outside of the ones that drilled it into your brain when you turned their games on. Naughty Dog in their early years was still trying to find out what made them special and had a crack at developing a wide list of game genres. It wasn't until 1996 that they had their biggest breakthrough with Crash Bandicoot, a game that defined their history and had all three entries in the top 10 best-selling PS1 games of all time. From 1996 to 1999, they dropped a Crash Bandicoot game every single year, finishing with Crash Team Racing. From here, the company was destined for success with whatever they put out next, and they decided on something new for the next generation of consoles. Jack and Daxter, the precursor legacy on the PS2. It's worth pointing out that although Crash Bandicoot defined an era of 3D platforming, it was completely outshone by Mario 64 on the Nintendo 64. This almost instant competition trampling from Nintendo forced Naughty Dog to look at how they approached 3D platforming moving forward, as non-linear level design seemed to be the way of the future. Evan Wells was a game designer for Jack and Daxter, and up until his retirement this year, was co-president alongside names like Neil Druckmann and sole president for a time since the year 2005. Wells has explained that during the early development stages of Jack and Daxter, before they even knew what they were working on, the team wanted to create a completely seamless experience with no loading screens. This focus on removing loading from the game was to allow for no break in the action and to make for a complete and non-stop immersion. With a dynamic day-night cycle, beautiful graphics and no loading screens, Jack and Daxter was not only Naughty Dog's best game at the time, but it was one of the most advanced and ahead of its time games to ever be made. The story of Jack and Daxter centers around Jack, a voiceless teenage protagonist as he tries to assist his friend Daxter, who, after falling into a vat of dark eco, undergoes a transformation into an otzel, a fictional blend of an otter and a weasel. Man, that stung! I told you we shouldn't have come here, and you listened! What? Guided by Samus the Sage, an expert in the enigmatic energy known as Eco, originating from the ancient race called the Precursors, Jack and Daxter discover the difficult task of rescuing their world from the rogue sages Gol and Maya. The malevolent duo aims to unleash Dark Eco onto the world, and as we saw with Daxter, it has the capability to corrupt everything it comes into contact with. This plot and world were incredibly engaging and were only amplified by the outstanding open level gameplay that gave players plenty to do and made 100%ing the game something that was actually fun and achievable for any level of gamer. 
It's easy to boil this game down to a 3D platformer, but with collectibles, minigames, no loading screens, and a great selection of quests, it was so much more than that. The public reception was beyond exceptional, and it took home its share of awards across multiple gaming awards shows. It was universally adored and set up the series for an inevitable sequel, which came just under two years later. During the later end of 2001, when Jack and Daxter was released, a relatively unknown game dropped on the scene that slightly impacted the trajectory of gaming for years to come. You may have heard of it, Grand Theft Auto 3. Of course you've heard of it, and the reason you've heard of it is because it was freaking awesome. I enjoyed it, you enjoyed it, and you know who else enjoyed it? Many Naughty Dog developers. A focus group conducted by Naughty Dog yielded results that showed the majority of gamers, including gamers who were only eight years old, preferred games with a more mature tone, and that platformers were possibly destined to be pushed out of popularity. This led to the inevitable discussion of do we continue this series after the massive success of our first game, or do we start something new and gritty? Well, why not do both? Because of their love for the series and the characters they'd created, Naughty Dog decided to continue with the series but give it a darker tone, a grittier atmosphere, and give Jack one of the most substantial character changes we've seen across the entire history of gaming. After defeating Gol and Meyer and uncovering a mysterious object, Jack and Daxter team up with Samus the Green Sage to observe Kira as she tests an ancient artifact called the Rift Rider. This mechanical device is connected to an ancient portal known as a Rift Gate. When Jack activates the device, the gate opens, unleashing strange creatures into the world, and the rider draws the group inside. During the ride, Jack and Daxter get separated from the others and eventually land in Haven City, a dystopian metropolis ruled by the tyrant Baron Praxis, and 500 years in the future. The city is patrolled by the Crimson Guard, a paramilitary force led by Praxis's right-hand man. While Daxter makes a hasty escape, Jack is apprehended and thrown into prison. Over the next two years, Jack undergoes a series of experiments conducted by Praxis involving Dark Eco as part of an effort to create a new soldier for the Dark Warrior program. So, see what we mean by tonal change? This darker tone obviously had an effect on the story, but it also impacted the gameplay in major ways. Even though the game maintains platforming sections as well as Jack's previous fighting style, it definitely leans heavier towards the action-adventure genre in this particular entry. It features flying cars that can be used to traverse the now completely open world city map, and on top of that, it features a bunch of guns. The addition of guns really took this game away from what it was previously and made it match the combat-heavy games of the time. As with any new venture or any change to something people love, there are going to be people who hate it, and there was a section of Jack and Daxter fans who found the changes to the game's style unappealing. And they aren't necessarily wrong, it's a completely objective experience. The game went from light, cute, bright platforming to dark, angsty, gothic action adventure. So no matter how you felt about it, you're technically right. Criticism was directed at Jack 2 for its limited mission checkpoints and overall high difficulty level. Naughty Dog developer Josh Shear openly acknowledged this by stating one thing that everybody can agree on is that the game is just way too f***ing hard. IGN ranked Jack 2 as the 8th most challenging PlayStation 2 game, pointing to its demanding combat, platforming, city navigation, and instances of instant death. Official US PlayStation Magazine commented, It isn't proper to expect us to be perfect in order to make up for your game's many imbalances. Life might not be fair, but I certainly expect my games to be. However, some viewed the game's difficulty as a positive aspect, with PlayStation Magazine noting, I appreciate a good challenge in today's games, and Jack 2 offers it. The game took a risk, and although it didn't work for some, it definitely paid off, proving, as they would time and time again over the coming 20 years, that Naughty Dog knows how to take a risk effectively, and always manages to make the right choices to move their company forward with the industry, and not get bogged down in old styles and habits. Jack 2 created a world with great mythology and plotlines that would get the resolutions they deserved in the third and final entry in the trilogy. Jack and Daxter dropped the Daxter and moved on to Jack 2, or Jack II for my Roman numeral fans, and then they dropped the Roman numerals and moved on to Jack 3, that's the number 3 for the layman. Whether this is a nod from Naughty Dog as they tell the player that they aren't going to get bogged down in patterns of previous games and trivial things like gameplay, style, or even names is unclear. What is clear is that Naughty Dog knocked it out of the park again with the third entry. Jack 3 takes everything it learnt from the previous two games and puts it into practice. 
Although it's very similar to Jack 2, the player can see clearly that they improved upon pretty much every element of this second entry that needed work, and then added some cooler features on top as a nice little dusting of fun. Jack 3 truly felt like the culmination of years of education and learning from a developer who watched their players with open hearts and open minds. Jack 3 ends up being a perfect conclusion to the previous two entries. Combining the bright and fun platforming of Jack and Daxter with the angsty emo world of Jack 2 wraps up the trilogy in a satisfying and full circle way that still leaves Jack's story open for more adventures. More adventures we were hoping to see, but never got to. After Jack 3, the franchise did see a few entries, Jack X Combat Racing, Daxter, and Jack and Daxter, The Lost Frontier. All of these entries were appreciated by some, but they were either spin-offs or just very average. Is the failures of these three spin-offs when compared to the success of the original trilogy the reason for the series lying dormant for so long? Probably not. So what is going on? During 2006, following Jack X Combat Racing and the Jack 2's PSP prequel game, Daxter, Sony began sharing details about the PS3 with developers like Naughty Dog. This transition has been noted as being incredibly difficult for the company, even being described as the darkest days in Naughty Dog's history. There were changes in development tools, changes in equipment, and changes in leadership within Naughty Dog. This put the company in a position that felt very unstable and unsecure. We know when Naughty Dog has their back against the wall, they work hard and take risks, and they always move with the times. With these new tools in their hands and gamers leaning more towards linear story-driven adventures, Naughty Dog did what they do best and got to work. The original plan, as it is documented, was to reconfigure Jack again and try and update the game and story to this new linear story-driven style. Unfortunately, after already doing it once between Jack and Daxter and Jack 2, they seemed to struggle making this round block fit into this square hole and instead opted on developing a new IP for this style of gameplay. Thus, Uncharted was born. Uncharted, just like Crash Bandicoot, just like Jack and Daxter, and just like everything Naughty Dog touches, was a smash hit. And while Naughty Dog had their eyes on that IP, Jack and Daxter began to fall further and further to the wayside. That was until 2009, when the Jack and Daxter property was entrusted to High Impact Games. Remember the Jack and Daxter game we mentioned before, Jack and Daxter The Lost Frontier? Well, that was what came out of all of this handballing, and it was unfortunately not that good. Naughty Dog claims that they couldn't develop Uncharted and Jack and Daxter at the same time, so instead of putting their baby to sleep while they watched their other kid, they handed it off to the weird guy across the street. And now look what happened. You got a dead baby. Nobody wants a dead baby. Naughty Dog have made it clear that they were unhappy with the way they handled the Jack and Daxter series after handing the property off. They were not happy with The Lost Frontier being the final game in the series, and in 2010, they spent about a year working on a way to bring Jack into a more realistic and modern world, with an entry expected to be titled Jack 4. With their goal to make Jack more contemporary, they realized early on in development that this approach to the series wasn't going to work, and it wasn't happening, and it needed to stop. Naughty Dog was stuck between two worlds of wanting to make a game they truly wanted to make, something new and something cool, whilst also respecting the legacy and themes set up by the games that came previous. Once they realized this development approach wasn't going to work for Jack and Daxter, they again moved on to a new series and left Jack to sit in the stinky fart that was The Lost Frontier. Apart from whispers of a film adaption in the works, Jack and Daxter has remained untouched and gathered dust since 2009, and with Naughty Dog having moved on to The Last of Us as their main focus as a company, it's difficult to imagine we'll see a new Jack adventure developed by them anytime soon. It's easy to answer the question of what happened though, as the information has weirdly been readily available since 2010. The game just didn't manage to pull focus. Naughty Dog had a lot of love for the series, but in attempts to update the game to modern audiences twice since the trilogy, they realized they might be doing a disservice to fans by forcing themselves to do something. So it sits dormant until someone at Naughty Dog has a breakthrough with how to adapt the game in 2023. Did The Lost Frontier kill the series? No, the game still has a massive fan base, and Naughty Dog themselves still love the franchise with both sides agreeing that The Lost Frontier never happened. Was the trilogy always intended to be the whole story? No, the trilogy was beloved and respected by gamers and became the trilogy as time went on, not as it was released. With the rise in third-party studios remaking games with major success, it's not out of the realm of possibility that Naughty Dog might handball the IP off to another group to handle a floor-to-ceiling remake of the original trilogy, especially following the success of the Crash Bandicoot remakes. But at this point in time, all we can do is hope. Until next time, Mojo Plays. 
Now go and collect 150 precursor orbs. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Mojo Plays and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of our latest videos.